So in the previous video, we talked about the light dependent reaction, where we looked at the two processes that happens during the light dependent reaction, which are non-cyclic photophosphorylation to produce ATP and reduced NADP, and also cyclic photophosphorylation, where only ATP is produced. But no matter what, these products will need to be used in the light independent reaction. So, if you remember, light independent reaction is where two very important things need to happen, where with the help of carbon dioxide, ATP and reduced NADP, there must be the formation of carbon-carbon bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds to form the organic molecules. Another very important thing to know about the light independent reaction is it can also be referred to as something called the Kelvin cycle. So if you see the word Kelvin cycle in the exam, just know that they mean the light independent reaction. Those two terms are used interchangeably, so don't worry about that. Now, what is very important to know about light independent reaction or the Kelvin cycle is that this process happens in the stroma of the chloroplast. I'm just showing you a diagram of the chloroplast here. The stroma is the space that I've highlighted in blue. And the purpose of the light independent reaction is for the formation of organic molecules, for example, glucose. But uh, Kelvin cycle can also form other things such as fructose, amino acids, even phospholipids and fatty acids as well. And we will see how this process, how this happens. What I need you to understand about light independent reaction here before we begin is as follows. You don't have to memorize this part, so you can skip this part if you want to. Now, I'm showing you three carbon dioxide molecules here. And remember, light independent reaction, carbon-carbon bonds have to be formed because we want to make the organic molecule. But here's the thing. It is impossible for the plants to directly join the carbon dioxide molecules together. The reason why is because carbon dioxide is extremely stable. And if you wanted to join carbon dioxide to another carbon dioxide to another carbon dioxide, the amount of energy needed by the plants is insurmountable. It is just impossible to reach that level of energy. So what plants do is, plants decide to take a slightly more complicated approach to form the carbon-carbon bonds. Okay, I'm going to show you a very detailed explanation of the light independent reaction. I don't need you to memorize this part of the video, but it helps us understand the Kelvin cycle or the light independent reaction in detail. So I would recommend that you watch this part of the video as well. Now, I know we want to make glucose molecules, and glucose is made up of six carbon. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just start with three carbon dioxide molecules, which I've represented in those black dots. So each dot represents one carbon dioxide molecule. Now, in this stroma of the chloroplast, there will be another molecule called RUBP ribulose bisphosphate. In the exam, you can just call it RUBP, that's okay. And if you look at the RUBP, they are the five carbon molecule represented by those five orange circles joined with each other. So one molecule of RUBP is made up of five carbon. All right, what needs to happen first is, because the carbon dioxide molecules cannot be joined directly with each other, as I've mentioned earlier, the plants have evolved where they take one of the carbon dioxide and join it together with one of the RUBP. And that process is known as the carboxylation of RUBP. Carboxylation just means adding carbon or a carbon dioxide molecule in this case. And it is very important that you need to know it uses an enzyme and the name of the enzyme is called Rubisco. Now some students will go, that's a very weird name for the enzyme. Right? If we were to explain Rubisco's full name, the name the full name of Rubisco is ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. So it's too long. So what scientists have done is they have just basically uh, shortened it and they say that the name of the enzyme is called Rubisco. You need to know the name of the enzyme, by the way, because this enzyme is one of the most common enzymes found in the world because every plant or every photosynthetic organism has this particular enzyme. 
Okay. Now, once the RUBP and one carbon dioxide molecule have been joined, it forms another molecule over there, which is how many carbon? Six carbon, as you can see there. But remember, you still have another two carbon dioxide molecules which have not been involved in the process. So what needs to happen is the plant needs to have three RUBP molecule. So each of the RUBP can join to one of the carbon dioxide and therefore they form the six carbon molecule. Now, when they form the 6-carbon molecule, the important thing to understand here is it is unstable. Okay, It is just an intermediate that is very unstable. And what will happen is it will spontaneously break down. But it doesn't break down in the way you think it does, where it just removes the carbon dioxide. No, it breaks down right in the middle, Okay, splits equally, and it becomes this three carbon molecules. These are all the three carbon molecules. And in this case over here, these three carbon molecules are called glycerate phosphate. And in the exam, you can just mention GP or some books will call it phosphoglycerate or they can just shorten it to become PG. Yes, in the exam, you can just put the word GP or PG. That's fine, right? Now, what's interesting here is Technically, you have already formed the carbon-carbon bonds. Now, you didn't join each of the carbon dioxide with each other. Yes, but you have formed a three-carbon molecule indirectly. So that's how plants bypass that earlier problem of the stable carbon dioxide molecules. So once the formation of carbon-carbon bonds have happened, the next thing that needs to happen is the formation of carbon-hydrogen bonds. Okay, so where's the hydrogen going to come from? Because the GP or the PG require hydrogen. Who is going to give the hydrogen? You guessed it. It has to come from the reduced NADP. So the second step that needs to happen is the reduction of GP or PG. Why reduction? Because they have to receive the hydrogen. And the hydrogen will be provided by reduced NADP, where the reduced NADP, as you can see here, they will release the hydrogen. And as they release the hydrogen, the NADP is then regenerated. And the hydrogen is accepted by the GP or PG. So to simplify this, we just have to say reduce NADP becomes NADP. And for the hydrogen to be attached to those molecules, GP or PG, they require ATP because ATP provides the energy for the carbon-hydrogen bonds to form. And after ATP provides the energy, it becomes ADP and phosphate. And the GP is now converted into something called triose phosphates. So comparing GP and triose phosphates or TP, Triose phosphates have the carbon-carbon bonds and the carbon-hydrogen bonds as well. Now, here's the interesting thing. What exactly is triose, by the way? When you say the word tri, it is three carbon. Ose is just basically sugar. So guess what? You've already made some organic molecules. Yes, it's not glucose, but who cares? We've made some organic molecules. And the organic molecule in this case is a three carbon sugar. Now, Here's where it becomes very important. I want you to see, in a cycle, whatever you begin with, you must get it back again. What I mean by that is, you begin the cycle with three RUBP molecules, okay? The most important thing in a cycle is, if you begin with three RUBP, you need to get those three RUBP molecules back. Okay, now I want you to look at those three RUBP molecules and I want you to count how many carbon are there in total. You can see a total of 15 carbon, where 5 carbon in each RUBP multiplied by 3 equals 15 carbon. Now, look at the thiose phosphates. I have 6 thiose phosphates over here. My question to you here is as follows. How many thiose phosphates are required to regenerate 3 RUBP? In this case, I only need five of the thiose phosphate molecules. Why five of the thiose phosphate molecules? Because if I just basically encompass the five thiose phosphates, how many carbon are there in total? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So I can use those five thiose phosphate molecules 
to regenerate the RUBP, okay, where the triosphosphate will be broken down, reformed, broken down, reformed, broken down, reformed, and I'll regenerate my three RUBP molecules, but this process requires ATP. That's why in the light-dependent reaction, when we talked about light-dependent reaction earlier, extra ATP needs to be produced so that the regeneration of RUBP can happen. Now, you only used five of the triosphosphates to regenerate the RUBP. You are still left with one triosphosphate. What do we do with that? Well, that is the organic molecule. And that organic molecule will be used to make your glucose, amino acids, or whatever. So, the steps in light independent reaction or Kelvin cycle are split, are divided into three. Where the first thing is carboxylation of RUBP using the enzyme Rubisco. Second, reduction of GP or PG. And third, the regeneration of RUBP. To simplify this for the exam, okay, this is what you just need to know for the exam. RUBP, which is a 5-carbon molecule, is carboxylated with, well, carbon dioxide, catalyzed by the enzyme Rubisco. It forms a 6-carbon unstable molecule, which splits to become PG or GP. PG or GP undergoes reduction. But for the reduction to happen where they receive the hydrogen to form the carbon-hydrogen bonds, that process requires ATP and also reduced NADP. Then you get something called triosphosphate or TP. You can just put the word TP in the exam. Don't worry about that. And some of the TP have to be regenerated back into RUBP. And that process requires ATP. In my, in my video here, I didn't write the fact that it requires ATP. So could you please add that as well? All right. Now, but not all the triosphosphates will be used to regenerate the RUBP. The excess triosphosphates that you get will be used to synthesize organic molecules, such as hexose sugars. Examples of hexose sugars, six carbon sugars, will be things like glucose, fructose, and such. So some of the glucose can be converted into cellulose, beta glucose converted into plant cellulose, which is the part of the plant cell wall. Some of the hexose sugars can be condensed together to form sucrose, where they can be translocated to the sink through the phloem. Some of this glucose can be converted into starch to be used as energy storage. One very important thing to also know is some of the organic molecule, the triosphosphates, can be added together with ammonium or nitrate, which contains nitrogen. And when they are added with ammonium or nitrate, they can form amino acids. So remember, photosynthesis is not just to form glucose, it's to form all the other organic molecules as well. Okay. In fact, here's the weird thing. Sometimes the phospho you don't have to memorize this, but sometimes the phosphoglycerates or the GPs, uh, PGs or GPs, which I've highlighted in pink, they can be directly converted into fatty acids and glycerol, which can be used to make your phospholipids and triglycerides. So you don't have to memorize the ones where I have uh, Talk, where, I, where I'm talking about fatty acids and glycerol, but you do need to know that some of the thiosphosphates can be converted into glucose, which becomes starch, cellulose, or sucrose, or some of them have to be added together with ammonium or nitrate to become amino acids. That part is very important. So that's basically what we have to know about the Kelvin cycle or light-independent reaction.